Hello, this is Raymond Fu from EMS Now, coming to you here from uh, Apex 2012 in San Diego. Today I'm joined by three distinguished gentlemen to talk about tracking and traceability, real-time vis visibility on the factory floor. On my left is John Agapakis, Director of America Sales for Microscan. And on my right here is Francois Monet. He is the co-president of Kojiscan. And further on to the right is Jason Spera. He is the CEO of Aegis Software. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Well, um, traceability can, of course, be applied to uh, many industries, you know, for manufacturers. So let's narrow it down first for, on traceability for electronics assembly. Could, could we maybe go around and quickly have a definition for each, each one of your businesses uh, on what is traceability for electronics assembly? Maybe, Jason, we'll start off with you. Wow, I got that question. Okay. <laughs> um, well, it actually, one of the problems in the industry is actually that the definition is varied, right. um, depending on the customer requirements. So, but in general, it's basically having a record of everything that intercepted the process and the product as it occurred, all the way from the point where it entered the uh, production to the time it ships out. So every component, all the consumables, all the WIP transactions, the test data, quality, incidents, non-conformances, and so forth, anchored to the serialized unit itself. Right. And Francois? That's a very, very good definition, Jason, by the way. There's not much I can add to okay. that. I would just say that uh, the actual needs for traceability vary from uh, one segment of the industry to another, from one company to another. Uh, everybody ultimately uh, would like to have a complete traceability of everything, but there's always a cost associated with that. Right. So the question is how much the industry is demanding, you know, if it's a life critical product, or if it's just consumer electronics, maybe you have different uh, price points and different right. needs right. that can be answered. So we need to have sort of a modular scalable offering right. to be able to do that. Yeah, we're going to go into that, the scalability of solutions. Okay, excellent. Okay, uh, John, perhaps? I think, again, very, uh, very good definitions uh, from both. Uh, but, uh, our, our role is typically to provide the devices that are on the line and extract the data and feed them into the systems that both Kogiscan and Aegis have software systems for traceability. So it really is to, pro to uh, allow us to track. The way we see, for example, our role in, is to perform what we call track, trace, and control. The devices that extract data from the line that can be used to figure out where a part is, the track function, where a part was, the trace function, and where should we send it, the control function, uh, which may, may be on identity ID or it may be on more general inspection, uh, quality, um, and a variety of other uh, uh, features. Right. So today, of course, uh, miniaturization and everything else is making the bots denser and denser. So uh, for, for yourself, John, how do you overcome the challenges of denser bots, smaller components? Uh, how, how do you even like put a label on them just to track them? And, and that's from, from a vision systems point of view. Very, very good, very good um, actual, actual question. Uh, clearly, if you go around the floor, you would see that virtually every board uh, in every line is tracked. And it used to be that you used to put a barcode label on the board. But the real estate required for 1D barcodes uh, is now severely affecting what you can put on the board itself. If you have all of us carry on us, electronic devices smaller and smaller from uh, you know, iPhones to uh, iPods to uh, you know, every, every single device uh, that we carry is becoming smaller and denser. So one of, the thi one of the enabling technologies that has allowed this transition and continued traceability was the advent of uh, direct part marking and two-dimensional barcodes or two-dimensional codes and more specifically data matrix codes uh, in the uh, about 15 years ago. Uh, those codes are, are, are the highest den are rectangular, essentially they have the form of a rectangular checkerboard and um, allow you to put a lot more information in much smaller space and also a very big difference from labels and 1D barcodes allow you to put the information directly on the part. The reason for that is because the uh, two-dimensional codes are digital versus the analog encoding of information that uh, a uh, 1D barcode uh, can encode. So right. that's really the biggest, I think, advantage or uh, most important enabling um, technology that allowed us to go and, and extend the traceability down to uh, the smaller and smaller devices. As an example, in the edge of every uh, flat panel display, you will see 2D codes that are now down to one millimeter by one millimeter square. 
uh, and etched in the glass, directly on the glass in, in the border of the flat panel. Okay, so uh, taking up what John has said, and for, for you guys, you're the software provider and for you the system integrator. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you see uh, data acquisition, as well as data capacity, as well as data management mm -hmm. uh, for the overall system for traceability from start to finish? Maybe Francois? Yeah, go ahead. Sure. Yeah, okay, sorry. No problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, essentially, uh, what John mentioned is, uh, you know, 2D technology is definitely becoming more and more prevalent. Mm -hmm. uh, ultimately, what we see today in a typical factory is a combination of different technologies. We have some items are identified with 1D barcode, like uh, component labels, for example. Uh, some are with 2D labels uh, or, or direct part marking. Um, sometimes with RFID, so uh, and, and so in some cases we need some vision systems, sophisticated vision systems to be able to acquire this information. Right. So it's a, a wide range of technologies. The idea is you take all these technologies, you, you capture all the data from various uh, inputs and standardize that in one database that then can feed this data to higher level systems. Right. So that's the whole objective here. Jason, from your point of view? Actually, it's interesting. Uh, the technology John mentions has ramifications for systems like ours because what you're talking about in some cases is the actual intelligent ID is not present on the product until further down the process. Mm -hmm. So that impacted our customers, automotive in particular actually, where the ID isn't on it until the very end of the primary line. And we had to architect our system so it can handle complete level four traceability in the absence of an ID until the end of the process, which is kind of a mm. counterintuitive situation, but it comes up all the time. So whether you're on placing or you're, you're burning the ID onto a component or somewhere once real estate is available for it, but the, the software systems have to handle that inherently, you know, and, uh, and it was quite a challenge at first, but now it's, this is how things are going. Real estate is disappearing and there have to be solutions for that. Right. And uh, just to go on uh, about uh, the reduction of errors, obviously accuracy is very important, but speed is important as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, how are these two qualities achieved while implementing traceability? Uh, maybe, John, you can go. Uh, speed, you mean in terms of scanning? Yes, uh, yes. How, how quickly can you acquire the data, or how quickly can you find out what's, what happened or what's wrong on the mm -hmm. line? There are two aspects of that, and I'll probably uh, I will deal with the what's going on on the line, and then uh, yep. my friends can uh, can take it up in the database and, and the uh, rest of the software. Mm -hmm. On the line, the good news is the machine vision technology that is what is used to extract the information from the, the board or from the component, mm -hmm. and to read the data matrix code has become faster and faster as our com as computers and microprocessors become faster and faster. So are the vision systems and the barcode readers that are used to extract this information. So in milliseconds, we can acquire, uh, you know, with some of our systems, we can acquire 60 frames per second mm -hmm. uh, and process them, in, typical, in, depending on the application, depending on the configuration, in similar, uh, pretty high rates of speed, uh, many uh, a second. Uh, so uh, this way, or much higher than that, even in, in very high throughput applications. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can, we can keep up with the uh, lines and the line speeds in terms of the acquisition of the uh, IDs from every individual component as it goes through the production line. Okay, uh, Jason, your, your, your point of view on speed well, and accuracy? It's a good question because we take it from there. And uh, in large installations, the, the problem is not so much the acquisition of the ID that passes from the, the device. It's that the customer wants so many checks done against that and it can't exceed the beat rate of the line, obviously. Um, so now you're talking about sometimes 15, 20 different checks, whether it's with too many yield problems at functional test, it could be material problems at that point of use or anything. Um, so we had to architect our system to be highly scalable at the logic layer. Um, thankfully, Microsoft and so forth has had these because of availability concerns in large-scale enterprise systems, there's technologies that are really remarkable. So even in large, multi-line plants with huge amounts of test data coming in, it does not bog down with a, uh, a validation request. So the speed has not been an issue. Um, I would say eight years ago it was tough, but now the technologies exist to get over it. Right. Francois? Mm -hmm. uh, it used to be a few years ago where people would view traceability as the, uh, the end result and you had to spend all this money uh, getting the data collection hardware and software in place, scanning all this data. It was viewed as an additional cost you know, to get the data into the right. traceability database. But uh, the way we look at it is really traceability should be a byproduct uh, almost of a, of a good tracking and control system. What right. you're trying to do is get real-time visibility to get good, you know, good response time for what's going on in a factory and how you react to that. 
and making sure that there's no errors. And if you do that really well, you're going to have full traceability as a result of that. So obviously, you mentioned, yeah, you, go ahead, you mentioned that accuracy, and we didn't, I don't think, address the question of accuracy, and probably it's worth pointing out that contrary to the 1D barcodes, the two-dimensional barcodes uh, have built-in error correction ability. Mm -hmm. So first of all, uh, they, they're guaranteed to not give you the wrong number, the wrong answer. Uh, they will be, you will, you may be able not to read it if the code is extremely damaged or obscured, but you will not get a wrong, a wrong number, a wrong answer, and a wrong ID. Uh, furthermore, even if you have a scratch or if you have uh, a portion of the code missing because of the built-in error correction characteristics of the code, you could be missing up to 20% or in some cases more of the code itself, mm -hmm. depending on the type of damage, and still be able to reconstruct fully what the uh, ID was in the code. Mm -hmm. Very contrary, very different from a 1D barcode where if you miss portion of the barcode, the best you can do is find out that you haven't, that you cannot read it, but you cannot reconstruct. Right. And so my next next question is perhaps more more uh, re relevant for both both you guys, you know, mm -hmm. system integrator as well as software. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, different manufacturers would require different solution sets to their challenges, and it does not make sense for them to invest in a so-called box solution right. for overall. So, uh, how scalable and how modular are traceability solutions today. Mm -hmm. Jason? Well, I think uh, it probably could be said of both mm -hmm. our solutions. Uh, yeah. They have to be modular right. because uh, not everyone can absorb, well one, they might not have the requirement for everything, and two, right. sometimes the culture of a company cannot absorb a transition to a full MES system overnight, whether they wanted to or not. They just can't do it. They have to do it in a phased manner. Mm -hmm. And there's cost implications and so forth. Um, so it has to absolutely be modular. Uh, if you're a medical manufacturer, you're going to need a tremendous amount of very rich data uh, and control, and uh, but you know if you're just making commercial products, maybe not so much. And those have cultural implications to the company uh, and cost impacts with the system and deployment time impacts. Right. Francois, absolutely, that's a very good point. And uh, one of the issues is that typically people have a certain set of requirements at a given point in time, and these will evolve over time as the technology evolves, the customer demand evolves as well. You know, for example, more and more, it's not just getting the data from the, from the equipment getting the test result, getting those types of things. It's also, for example, if you're dealing with a vision system, you want to actually store and record the image. So if you have a problem in the future, you can see the image on the board, the image of the label, you know, all, the, all this kind. So the amount of data and the amount of information that we need to store for traceability just keeps evolving over time. Yeah. Right, so I'm sure to solve the problems yeah. of the manufacturer, you guys spend a lot of time just sitting down with them to understand their issues and their problems Absolutely. before you even come up with a solution. One, one of the great things about our business is the customers have no lack of requirements that they're feeding us. That's, 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 the, that's the challenge. <laughs> the modularity and scalability extends all the way down mm -hmm. to the devices on the, on the line itself. Yeah, exactly. So uh, in, in our case, in, uh, in the readers, um, most of our systems, or all of our systems, really are scalable and modular. Mm -hmm. You can, uh, they can take the form from anything from uh, uh, images, miniature images, uh, smart cameras, to PC-based vision systems with multiple cameras, digital cameras connected to them, uh, all with the same software, the same interface uh, that allows you to, again, scale up or down the solution depending on what the problem is. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, gentlemen, for sharing your considerable insight into this, uh, this area of electronics manufacturing. Thank, thank you so you. much. Pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Pleasure.